Dear students, in this module we are going to look at how to measure the molecular weight or mass of the fragments produced as a result of fragmentation of the precursor protein or peptide that was there in your sample. You would know that in MS1 we measure the molecular weight of the precursor molecules. The precursor molecules can be proteins or peptides that are coming in from your sample. So once you have measured the intact molecular weight, that is, you have performed the MS1, then you can put the sample molecules, that is the protein or peptides, up for fragmentation. So this process is called MS2 or tandem MS. So once you have the molecule, that is the protein, in the chamber, then you try to fragment it inside a mass spectrometer and therefore it will give you two fragments resulting from the fragmentation process. The molecular weight of these two fragments can of course then be made again and you will have two molecular weights or two peaks in the mass spectrum. The techniques that are typically used to fragment the proteins or peptides include ECD, CID, ETD that is electron capture dissociation or collision induced dissociation or electron transfer dissociation and uh, many others. The important thing to remember here is that each fragmentation technique fragments the protein at a specific site on the backbone. If you are using ECD then a specific site on the backbone will be fragmented however multiple such sites can be fragmented by the fragmentation technique. That is, the protein's backbone will be fragmented at a specific bond, but because the protein is a polymer comprising of multiple peptide bonds and multiple amino acids, so each bond that will be fragmented will be of a specific type as, as a result of a specific fragmentation technique. This is a very important point to note. After the fragmentation, for instance, CID will report B and Y ions. ECD will give you C and Z ions. So these C and Z, B and Y, A and X are actually two fragments reporting from the same protein. The only reason why we give different names to these fragments is because of the location at which the backbone has been fragmented to produce these ions. So once you have fragmented the protein then you can of course measure the molecular weight and instead of one peak that was there in MS1, the molecular weight of the intact protein or peptide, now you will have two peaks for B and Y or C and Z or A and X ions. So therefore you will have twice the number of peaks that, are, that was there from MS1. In this example, I will show you how exactly this fragmentation process occurs in order to clarify the concept further. Please consider this as the backbone of the protein. Of course, the protein can be very long, but in this simple example, we are just considering a situation where we have two amino acids only. You know that this bond is called the peptide bond. So, if the peptide bonds in the backbone of the protein are fragmented, then B and Y ions are reported. However, if the alpha carbon and amino terminal bond is fragmented, then you have the C and Z ions. Of course, once the fragmentation has occurred here to form C and Z ions, then you will have two molecules, two fragments. But in the sample you have so many proteins, so many molecules, so therefore it is possible that in this case if this bond is broken at let's say R I plus 1 residue, then for the case of some other uh, molecule of the same protein, some different 
bond will be fragmented. So the result will be still C and Z ions, but the length of the fragments will be different. Therefore, it is important to remember that if we use ECD and produce C and Z ions, not all C and Z ions will be of equal mass because the alpha carbon and NH bond will be cleaved differently for different molecules. So to conclude, the experimental uh, measurement of the fragments can be done by using 10 mmS or MS2. In this, using a specific fragmentation technique of your choice, you can fragment a specific bond on the backbone of the protein, but since the protein is a polymer, these bonds are repeated and any bond can be cleaved during the fragmentation process and you can measure the molecular weight of the resulting fragments.